Were you one of the pale male stale men who were triggered by Greta Thunberg's address and what she had to say? Because I know she received a lot of criticism around the world and maybe for good reason. Well, does one really need to worry uh, about scientific advice given by somebody who not only has no qualifications in the subject, but has not studied it? She has simply been fed the Communist Party line on the climate, as most school children have, by teachers who themselves have a very dim understanding of the science and are willing to advocate the Communist Party line simply because that is their general political inclination. So she merely represents the radicalized, communized youth in our schools, and therefore, far from allowing the private schools to be abolished, as the communists in this country want, we need to make absolutely sure that we keep an independent schooling system. And funny enough, I was in the United States working on this the other day with a leading construction company that is fed up with the low quality of employees it gets and also the bad attitude they have uh, from the what they call the public schools, which we would call the state schools. And they were fascinated at the idea that a completely parallel independent education system could be established using the internet and using the homeschooling model where you set up school districts and you have it properly organized by a corporation that runs it not for profit, but uh, simply to, to provide a far better education than the state system can provide now at a tiny fraction of the cost so that people who have the right after all, not to have to go to the state schools, they can be homeschooled if, if they wish, uh, then uh, to, to have a homeschooling system. And the same with the universities on the model of Liberty University, most of whose students are, uh, study online and the Open University. There are now plenty of such models. And this is a way of breaking the stranglehold of the communist left on education by setting up the corporation in such a way that every teacher, staff member, student, pupil, whatever, in the entire system signs a contract governing their behavior, and in particular, for instance, preventing them from taking any steps to deny or repudiate the academic freedom to research, to inquire, to speak, and to publish. So as it and is, Lord so Christopher, though, Greta Thunberg is now the poster child for the climate alarmism movement. Have they forget. shot themselves in the foot by making her, though, the poster child? Because it seems as if no, it's becoming no, more I polarized. Think, I think, I think for, if, if you're looking at this in purely public relations terms, which on the whole I don't, then using a child as your poster child is actually not a bad idea. Look at the headlines it's getting. Look at this ridiculous so-called church in Sweden, which has said that she is the successor to Jesus Christ. I mean, this is how silly the climate communists now are. And why are they becoming quite as silly as this? It's not because it's worse than we thought. It's because the climate change that they predicted simply isn't happening at anything like the rate they predicted. In fact, it's happening at between one third and one quarter of the rate that they predicted. And just last week, since you and I last spoke, my good friend, Professor Pat Frank of the Stanford Linear Accelerator, and they do not employ people who don't know any science, has succeeded after 13 separate rejections in getting published the paper that reveals for the first time that because the computer models on which the entire case for worrying about rapid global warming is founded are incapable of making any forecast about global warming, we don't have to worry about it. He has discovered that if you propagate the uncertainty in just one of the many unknown unknowns in the climate uh, down the years, then the envelope of uncertainty within the models is so large that every prediction they make falls completely within it. And statistically speaking, that means that those predictions are no better at all than guesswork. Now, this is an astonishing result. And of course, so far, no mainstream news medium has picked it up. But let me tell you what's coming next. We have now submitted our paper on a huge error in the calculation of how much warming we might get to a leading, one of the top 10 climate journals, and they have not thrown us out. 
they have written back saying, yes, we have looked at this. It does appear to be, uh, at least on the face of it, serious science. And therefore, we have appointed an editor who will now supervise the process of peer review. Now, we strongly suspect that this paper will succeed. It will get through peer review. And if it does, then we will have established two things. One, that at a vital point in their calculations, climatologists forgot the sun was shining, and therefore they forgot that there is a feedback response to the sun. They had added that enormous feedback response onto the feedback response to the warming caused by greenhouse gases, thereby tripling or quadrupling that warming. That's how they did it. They didn't really know what they were doing, but that's the mistake they've made. But it's not the only mistake they've made. The temperature that would prevail at the surface of the earth in the absence of any greenhouse gases or feedbacks is known as the emission temperature. And that has been underestimated by about 20 Kelvin. We're still trying to track down exactly how much, but it's around 20 Kelvin. Because, and Kelvin are the same as Celsius for this purpose, because they treated the earth as flat when they did that calculation. So we have climate scientists not only forgetting that the sun is shining, but also treating the earth as flat. Well, I've got news for them, except in Scotland, the sun is shining. And except in Kansas, the earth is not flat. It is an oblate spheroid. And you have to do your sums correctly. And they haven't done that. They realized they, they treated the earth as flat and they introduced a kludge factor of four, which is, as you know, the ratio of the surface area of a sphere to its great circle. They've done that, but that doesn't help. They're still 20 Kelvin overshot uh, or undershot. And what that means is that the natural greenhouse effect, which they thought was 33 Kelvin, is in fact only 13 Kelvin. Uh, and a, a more than half of that, of course, is the directly forced warming from the naturally occurring greenhouse gases, leaving very little room for feedbacks either to those greenhouse gases or to the sun itself. So we're not looking at large amounts of warming. And our paper explaining all this has already passed the first stage in the peer review process. It's been accepted as not being gibberish and that uh, therefore it is going out for peer review. And we will now, we think for the first time, get a reasoned consideration of this argument. And you've and already been published in a peer up. review journal, is that correct? I'm sorry? You've already been published in a peer review oh, journal? I've published uh, about a dozen papers in various peer review journals and books over the years. Um, it's not a bad record. Indeed, there are many professors of climatology who haven't got as good a publication record as that. So, yes, I know the game. Uh, and I suppose the toughest process of peer review we faced was back in uh, 2015 when we had a paper giving the first hint that there was something wrong with the way the models were counting feedbacks uh, back in the uh, Bulletin of the Chinese Academy of Sciences. And that provoked an enormous uproar. One of my co-authors was given uh, the most nasty series of personal attacks in mainstream newspapers around the world that I have ever seen. They were absolutely vicious. But of course, that told us that told us they knew we were right. But let me ask you this, Lord Christopher, that. you're someone who's pulled the levers of power as an advisor in your own government for some years, and you know how these movements work, including the climate change movement. Is this juggernaut going to be stopped anytime soon? Yes, it is, because, you see, the science against it is mounting up. And I'm very good at, I've learnt from the left, that you have to become good not only at policy, but also at what they call process. Now, there is a process for making the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change consider any errors that it may have made. And we are going to make sure that Pat Frank's paper, for instance, is made subject to that process. And we're going to feed it in and say, we require this to be looked at because this undermines all of your assessment reports, because all of them are predicated on calculations in these models, which turn out to be completely valueless for their purpose. And the IPCC then has to respond, and it has to follow a procedure laid down for it by the Inter-Academy Council when it got egg all over its face, 
having failed to realize that the ice in the Himalayas will not all be gone in the next 25 years, as they had said on the basis not of a peer-reviewed result, but of a left-wing journalist's copy on the subject. And so there was such shock among governments around the world that uh, the, the IPCC is now having to follow an error reporting procedure. And now that these very big errors are coming to light, errors so fundamental that they remove entirely the case for any concern about global warming, then what we are going to do is to activate that error reporting protocol, make them study those errors, make them study them honestly. We have the Trump administration watching after all, and they're in on this game. And as a result of that, the IPCC is itself in its next major assessment report next year going to have to take account of these and many other errors that it has made. And as the science collapses, so the politicians will eventually have to accept that they can no longer rush to their nearest professor and say, oh, look, you've got a lab coat on with leaky biro sticking out of the front pocket and, and chemical stains on it, therefore we'll listen to you. Because the scientists themselves will now be telling them, uh, sorry, we cocked it up. We got it wrong. We screwed up. There is no longer any basis for concern. But Lord Christopher, at the same time, and I accept your point that the science will ultimately undermine their conclusions. Is it not the case that whenever people like Greta Thunberg can stand up in front of the world's media and say we face a mass extinction and make claims like that, and others do as well, that, do, that are not backed up by any evidence, that the ability of the media to use brute power in pushing this narrative will not cease, and despite the fact that the evidence the may contradict what they're saying. You can stop this juggernaut is to remove all, and I mean all, scientific fig leaves from it. Let us be very clear, the two errors, or three errors I've just given you, one, that uh, the models are completely useless, they're no better than guesswork. Two, they forgot the sun. Three, they thought the earth was flat. Those three errors on their own are quite enough, I assure you, to remove all scientific concern about the rate at which the planet may warm. It's just not going to warm very fast, if at all, because there's an even larger error that I haven't quite got my head around yet, so I can't be entirely confident about this one. I'll give it to you anyway. The, uh, in fact, this is an Irish one. The Connollys, uh, father and son, Michael and Ronan Connolly, have done some fascinating research. And what they've discovered is that as far as they can make it out from uh, investigating 20 million radio sound records, that's a profiles of balloons taking an electronic gadget up through the atmosphere all the way to the mid-stratosphere and measuring as they go the temperature, the humidity, the atmospheric pressure, the wind direction and strength, they have collected those data and analyzed them and discovered that the atmosphere taken as a whole acts as an ideal gas. Now, there's no such thing, strictly speaking, as an ideal gas, and internally the atmosphere behaves very much not as an ideal gas. You've got a transfers of temperature going on all over the place. But overall, it acts as an ideal gas. And if that is the case, then a very important corollary of a paper written by Albert Einstein himself in 1917 about quantum radiation is that the greenhouse effect albeit that it's real and measurable, cannot actually cause any warming in an ideal gas. Now, if they're right about that, that runs a coach and horses through the whole thing. So we have three proven errors of physics. We have another one in the pipeline, which hasn't yet proven out, but I think it may. And then there's, of course, the overarching error of economics in all this, which is that if you do a proper intertemporal investment appraisal using the normal mid-range intertemporal discount rate of approximately 7% per annum, then there is no, and I mean no, economic case for mitigating global warming, even if it were going to be as great as everyone has been trying to predict, which on the basis of the three areas I've already mentioned, it isn't. So there is no longer any scientific or economic case in reason or logic or science for doing anything at all about global warming except sitting back and 
enjoying the sunshine. And because of that, once these results one by one are published, and Pat Frank has got there first, he's the first one to get this major shock to the system published, and there will be others, we think ours might well be next, then that will be, scientifically speaking, the end of the scare. And it's only a matter of time then before the climate communists realize they can't go on getting away with this and eventually drop the subject and go on to some other way of trying to bring the West to its knees, economically speaking. I had an agonized email today, for instance, from, from a citizen of the state of Victoria in Australia, who is paying something like a hundred times the world price for her electricity because global warming, global warming that isn't going to happen at anything like a dangerous rate. And so there's going to be a lot of red faced people. Well, Lord Christopher, thank you so much for your time. We've thoroughly enjoyed it and appreciate all your insights into these topics. Well, it's a great pleasure. So don't worry about Saint Greta of Thunberg, who is now being elevated to the status of the divine by the church in Sweden, where she comes from. Um, this is simply standard communist propaganda. You, you and just be... like all totalitarian propaganda, it deserves to be treated with disdain, distaste, disfavor. And in the end, just ignore it. Just ignore her and she will go away. Don't get wound up by it. If they want to talk in their own little echo chamber of people who know nothing about science but everything about the Communist Party line, let them. What we're going to do is get on with the science, get on with the economics, demonstrate formally to the highest standards of scientific rigor that the whole thing is nonsense. And once everybody understands that it really is nonsense, that there is no credible scientific way any longer of arguing that there is or is even likely to be any problem with the climate caused by us, then that will be that. And Greta can go back to school. She should go back to school because she has a very great deal to learn, including how to compose her features. Did you see the look of intense hatred on her face when she was photographed staring at President Trump? She is, is, she's still a child, of course, mentally, I should think, probably an age considerably lower than her, her very few years. Uh, so she hasn't learnt that if you move in these circles, you have to be a little bit more suave, a little bit more laid back. And if you want people to listen to you, don't call them names and don't tell them they're, doing, they're not doing enough. After all, we're already destroying the Western economies with electricity five or six times, or in Victoria, a hundred times the, the world uh, price that would prevail were it not for global warming. We're already trashing. We've, we've lost our last aluminium smelter, our last steelworks. They've all gone to China, where they're not obliged to comply by the Paris Pro Protocol. So all we're doing is shutting down our own industries, transferring them to other countries whose standards of emission per unit of production are far higher uh, in terms of the amount of emissions put out than ours. And therefore, every time we go on moving against the Western economies, and that is what this is all about, it's a communist attack on the West, it's nothing to do with the climate. But the more we do destroy the Western economies, the more we increase uh, the climate problem, if there is one, which of course there isn't. Well, Lord Christopher, you're certainly a breath of fresh air. Thanks again for your time. Many thanks. God bless you all. God bless Ireland.